Welcome back to Solomon's Porch with your host, Jason. And Sean. And we are back with another album review here on The Porch. This week, we are covering a long-awaited album that I've been looking forward to for so long now. The new Love and Death album, Perfectly Preserved. So, the, the last album was released way back in 2013, eight years ago. Uh, we got the single, Lo Lamento, back in 2016. So I've been patiently waiting with fingers crossed and knees, you know, going up and down and waiting for this album to drop. And it finally dropped on the 12th of February. And so uh, here is the album cover. In case you want to look it up, check it out. I thought it was a very interesting album cover. Uh, I was trying to figure out if that was a naked woman, and I think it is. But obviously they have her covered up. So... Uh, let's dive into it, man. I know uh, at, at the very beginning, I don't want to try this. I want to see if we can guess each other's favorite track and least favorite mm. track. Uh, we haven't done this before, but I thought it'd be cool to see if we could figure it out. And honestly, I would love everybody else to try to figure out which do you think are mine and Sean's favorite and least favorite before we tell them. And so I would have to say, I honestly, looking at my notes here, I'd say probably Sean's least favorite might be Let Me Love You. And his favorite would probably be uh, the heaviest on here, which might be Affliction. Or part of Affliction. Okay. Was I right? Uh, I, I mean, you were definitely in the ball field. Okay. Um, I... <laughs> I still sort of, I, I I don't know. I, I think that um, when when they released the song down, you know, uh, it, it it was the 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 problem is, is that I was expect it really did. I was expecting so much more from them. So every time I hear it, I kind of go, ah, let's just go. They 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 could have done so much more. Um, so I I think I'm sort of somewhat biased. Um, as, as far as a, a favorite, um, the affliction is definitely in my, my top four. Um, I, you know, it's sad to say, but I think Lo Lamento is still my favorite. Uh, and, 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 and I'll explain why when, when we go through the, the, the tracks, uh, okay. for me, the first half of the album was just, I could do it without it. The second half starting at about track seven was, uh, all that's really worthwhile. Okay, so what do you think mine were? Uh, your least favorite. Um, I, uh, maybe Death of Us or Slow Fire. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I think Death of Us. I think the one that I really didn't like as much is probably uh, The Hunter or Tragedy. Really, uh, okay. Death of Us was okay, but you know I'll, I'll go in and uh, we'll talk about more detail later. So uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and go through this album. So one thing that I know right, you, you didn't tell me what your favorite was. Oh, um, <laughs> it's either Lola Mento or Affliction. The problem was is I listened to <laughs> Lola Mento. I've listened to so many times, right? And Affliction's new, so it was hard to tell if I'm listening to that more because it's so new. But it's got to be a tie between those two. Okay. Uh, overall, I agree with you. I felt like the first half of the album was was not fantastic for me. Not as far as Love and Death goes. If it was another band, I might have would have liked it. But I think I was just wanting something a lot heavier. And so, and honestly, Slow Fire starts to pick it up a little bit. Um, so mine starts at Slow Fire. It was a slow start, but Slow Fire picked it up. So, <laughs> well, well let, let, let me start off with saying that in general, you're, you're talking about some excellent guitar work. Yeah. Um, th th there's just no question about that. So let, let's not even, you know, pretend that when we're criticizing these songs that we're criticizing the, the musical genius and skill that takes place within the guitar work. Um, what we're what we're really doing is that we're kind of nitpicking and pulling stuff out of this. Is the album overall uh, a good album? Yeah, it's decent. I don't think it's as good as um, their first um, 
just um, between bit, here and lost between here and lost yeah thanks um it's not um here between here and lost felt like it had more diversity to it a little more genuine sound um this album feels like that they said hey here's a template and we're going to follow this template for every single track we're going to start off with some really cool intro we're going to go into this um melodic um clean lyric and and that's that's probably the big point here clean lyric uh section then we're going to get a breakdown closer to the end halfway to uh you know midway to the end and, and we're going to get this like really kind of cool crunchy whatever we're going to do something fun playful here and then it's going to come back to that clean lyric thing and then we're going to end it out with something kind of fun and neat and and that's pretty much the formula throughout this entire album and if, if i can pick that out it's a sad day i'm, I'm right right I'm, I'm just saying you, you know you, you've got on on between here and lost with it which was a cover track and and, and, it, and it was just so out there it, it, it was so off base of anything else you know and 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 they didn't do anything like that with this album except for what i feel like are the last half of this uh the track so anyway did you want to go track by track on this or how'd you want to do yeah let's do that um so infamy i felt was a uh, it was a nice intro smooth yeah and yeah. it, it almost reminded me a little bit of a, a Brutality's intro, just being nice and smooth and chill. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I felt like it was a great transition into Tragedy. And, and I'm not saying it, the album was Tragedy. I'm saying the, the track Tragedy. Um, right. So what would you think about the uh, Infamy? Uh, I, I agree with you. I, I thought it was it was a nice intro. Uh, did it really stand out? Not, not a whole lot. Um, I... You know, you mentioned Brutality's intro. I think Brutality's intro was better. Um, mm, okay. okay. It, you know, it's and and uh, you know whatever. It's it, it was good. It just wasn't as good as it could be. I think. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, tragedy. So I felt like it had a great intro. It was a little bit of a, a mix of softer with a, a a harder bridge to it, and. Again, it, it didn't make me, I'll be honest, when I heard it, it didn't make me excited for the rest of the album, not this track. Um, it was okay, it was good, but again, my expectations for Love and Death are like raw, rough, Brian Welsh vocals. One of the things about this album is I really feel like they were trying to transition more into uh, the other guitarist, J.R. Barris. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He did a lot of vocals on this album. That's where that soft, the, the, the clean lyrics came from. And that part of the album may, reminded me of a red, slower songs type of a feel, um, which are not my favorite yeah. red songs. Yeah, I would I would even go so far as to say they sound more like uh, Breaking uh, Benjamin, which is ironic because the lead singers featured on one of the tracks but <laughs> it, it 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 felt it, the first half of the album <clears throat> in in general feels like uh a, a breaking benjamin average rock song you know it, is it's it not a, bad is it a, yeah is it a good rock song yeah it's a good rock song is it what you expect from love and death no right. you, you know we talked about the clean lyrics you know, again, going back to to between here and lost, uh, you know the the vocals on it are are just gritty and grungy all the way through. So whether he's screaming or grunting or or just e even in the you know the sing songy parts, they just have a bit more growl to them. Um, Breaking Benjamin actually has a song, and I, I did uh, jot it down. So cold, which is a, a fairly recent track, which I think. Uh, exemplifies more of what I would have expected vocally on this album, um, but didn't really get. So, anyway. gotcha. Tragedy. So, so three down. Oh, three down. Yeah, yeah you kind yeah. of you you Man. shared your feelings. You didn't like it. Uh, 
I thought it was okay. Uh, I definitely didn't think it was as good as Lo Lamento whenever it came out as the single for the track. And it it, it kind of reminded me of whenever Brian Welsh joined Corn again. They had that lead single. I can't even remember the name of it. It's kind of what it reminded me of was that lead single where I was just like, uh, it's an okay song. I'm not going to put it on a playlist. Like, I'm not going to skip it on the album, but I'm not going to playlist it, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, um, yeah. And so that's kind of the way I felt about it. And, uh, you know, it was what it was. Now, number four, Let Me Love You. For me, I I thought it was a, to me, it was the, the most radio sound that they had on the album. They had Lacey Sturm on it from Flyleaf. Uh, I felt like it was a good feature, but I was really hoping for her to come on Love and Death. It would have been a heavier Lacey vocal performance. And this was not. This was the sing, the the singing Lacey, which is fine. Like I love her worship album, the one that she has with her husband. I have no issues with her singing, and I think her singing was great. But again, uh, I feel like this is a. I almost feel like this is a love and death transitioning album from like metal to a rock slash hard rock type of uh, feel, which uh, it's okay. But you know, I'm a bigger fan well, of the metal. Yeah, and, and, and they signed with a, a, a record label to be able to get this album put out there. And so I don't know how much uh, influence that they had within the album, uh, and, and that could be part of it. I do know that, that Brian had said he wanted to work with Lacey um, in, in the future several years ago or so. Um, and and the thing is, is that uh, we know that Lacey can pull out some nasty grungy vocals you yeah know? yeah and, and and so yeah that that's kind of what we were you know would have thought hearing that she was going to be on this album and and you get this nice soft sing-songy kind of thing and 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 again that's fine it's okay to have a track like that um but again the whole first half of the album is like that so um yeah. i my, my biggest note for this track it was exactly what you said it sounds like it's it's a radio track so maybe that's that's their point is that they're trying to um, make more music that's going to be for radio plays to be able to generate more funds i and, and i get that i just don't have to like it either so yeah i feel like like instead of having half of the album feel like this i feel like they should have had this one song for radio and let the rest yeah. of the album be like the latter part of the album. But again, yeah. that's just our preference. We're not on the business end of things, so we can't necessarily make the calls of what the band should do for the better future well, yeah, of we, the band. We, we don't pay their bills. <laughs> I mean, we, we I bought the album. I, well, I pre-ordered it. So, uh, so as far as I, that goes... I, I'm not paying their current bills. <laughs> I, I, bu I bought the last album. But yeah, that's yeah. It. Uh, so, Slow Fire... For me, I just I had it was pretty good. I thought it was a creative intro, and they reintroduced that element of that intro into the latter part of the song. I don't know, can't remember yeah. if it was closer to the end or not. And, uh, yeah, and it was. It is. I had it down as a pretty good song, is what I had. Um, for me, I felt like this was the, the beginning of picking up the album on an upswing. And uh, how'd you feel about it? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. It, it probably is more of the picking up point, which makes it a good transition into, um, you know, track eight, the hunter. But, um, yeah, a really most notable thing was that intro. The, the intro was really pretty cool. Um, and, and you're right. It, it is sort of repeated, uh, sort of breakdown ish or whatever. Um, the little solo part toward the end. Um, and, and even the ending was really pretty decent too. So, yeah, yeah. but, but, but nothing that was just like, Oh my gosh. So, yeah. So the Hunter, uh, featuring Keith Wallen, I put down that it felt like a, a red song, a slower red song. And, well, uh, he, he's lead singer breaking Benjamin. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and it wasn't, uh, even the breakdown, it wasn't like real heavy. It wasn't like some of the other breakdowns where it really picks up and you get this, you know, 10 second of head banging, fist pounding type of gu guitaring and, uh, or, or just musical, uh, instrumentation period. And so I felt like even that wasn't, uh, exactly what I was kind of wanting. And this was the, technically it was the third single for the album. And, uh, but it, 
It's not for heavy metal fans, is what I kind of came across at the end of it. I was thinking Sean probably didn't like The Hunter. So, I don't know. What your thoughts? No, it, 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 it's definitely, um, you know, I mean, there's only four tracks on here that I really kind of dig. Uh, and, and it made that list, uh, but it was the bottom of the list. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Lo Lamento, one of the best songs on the album. And I don't know if they were signed to the record label when they did the single. They released that single back in 2016. And I'm looking at the um, the credits here. At that time, it says here on Apple Music that it was Head Dog Music uh, under license to Digitally Sound Records. Uh, This particular album, the album as a whole, is uh, Love and Death under exclusive license to Blind Tiger Entertainment. I'm not familiar with necessarily those labels and whatnot, but... The single itself was fantastic. I loved it. Unfortunately, I felt like it shouldn't have been on the album. Though this is one of those things when I was looking at the track listing, I was like, "There's ten songs. We got the song almost at the halfway point in eight years between the last album and this album." I felt like it was yeah. they were really trying to get as much music as they could on this, and this is one that they slid in there. And I love the song. I'm just not a fan of that move sliding this in to make it a full length album. I wasn't a fan of that, but the song itself is fantastic. It's great. One of my favorite, uh, love and death songs. Yeah. It, again, hands down one, one of the best, uh, love and death tracks. Um, it, you know, it, again, this is, this is the only track where the, uh, sung vocals aren't so clean that right, they, they've got right. that, that, that bit of grittiness to it. You know, it talked about uh, the hunter with uh, Wallen on there. It, is that you know, even in so cold, he brings out some of that grittiness. So we know he can do this. So you know, why is it that we're cleaning up something that could have been you know more grungy? And again, I think that brings us back to the question of of you know radio play and being able to sell stuff. And you know, a, a nine track album, eh? 10 track okay i'm good with so i feel like you're right it, it was more like uh we're coming up short let's put low lamento on there plus it was very popular yeah um but but it does feel a little bit out of place it feels in place in the last half of the album but out of place because of how the lyrics are done but still probably the best track absolutely affliction number nine uh, it was a good mix of slow and hard it was i felt like it was a well-balanced track uh, the last minute, probably being my favorite minute in the whole album. Uh, it picks up real heavy. It rides that heavy wave. I think it slows down a small portion of it, but uh, Affliction, again, it's probably my favorite new song on the album, uh, which yeah. is aside from Lo Lamento. And, uh, which, I mean, at the end of the album, I felt like they were trying to end this out uh, for the metal fans. And I, I really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, man, what do you think? Yeah, I, you know, uh, Affliction, I felt like, feels a little more low Lamento-ish. Um, and yeah, definitely is 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 a number two for sure. Um, and definitely number one if you're just talking about brand new tracks. Um, it, 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 it's it got that little bit of darker side to things. And, and I think that that's kind of where love and death is always kind of recited. And maybe that's what they were going with, with this album was the love part. This the first half kind of like peace and war for demon hunter was, um, and, and, and I don't know, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, but it, it's still not, you know, it, it's still, man i i didn't i don't think they pulled that off uh but affliction definitely worth uh buying that track i something i else i forgot to mention about uh low lamento the drumming stands out in low lamento i did not specifically notice the drums in any other track on oh, the sound. okay like like, like I, I didn't sit there and go oh dude that was that was awesome drums man you know yeah okay you do that with abr matt griner's killing drums and you're like oh whoa um nothing else on this album felt like that except for low lamento so anyway. so it felt like they had a drum track that they were maybe with in a way 
And, and I, I, mean, I, I, I know they actually have a drummer. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Isaiah Perez. And uh, I mean, the drums was cool for me with the album. I didn't notice anything I didn't like, but again, I didn't notice anything that really stood out. Um, and so I feel like, you know, the guitars stood out to me. The bass didn't stand out in a, a, a huge way, and the drums didn't stand out in a huge way. So to me, the drums and the bass on this album were like the IT guys during church. Like, you never know they're there unless something goes wrong. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, unfortunately. And so that, that shifts all the focus to uh, vocals and guitar, which was that, that was great on the album. And, uh, sure. But the, uh, so the last track, White Flag featuring Ryan Hayes, great single. I mm-hmm. love Brian's performance on this. I felt like he really stepped it up on this one. And uh and, and the breakdown for me, I absolutely loved it. Uh the and I mentioned that on the show before, the five, four, three, two, one, and then they go into that little breakdown there. Uh right. I, I loved it. This is this is definitely uh probably my number three on the album. So one, two, and three is eight, nine, and ten for me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, and, and I would say that White Flag contends with Affliction for me uh, for that number two spot. And it I, the note, the main note that I had on this track was that it felt like it was the most, outside of Low, was the most complete song. So it felt the like it had the most richness to it. It felt like they spent time on this track. They really were into it. The creative juices were going. Whereas, uh, you know, again several of the other tracks just sort of felt like, Hey, we're just following this pattern and we're just making this happen. We've got some lyrics and we're slapping this junk together kind of thing. This sounds like that this was a mature track that they'd been working on. They've been cultivating, uh, and, and, and growing. And, um, you know, one of the other kind of fun things is that, you know, so Ryan Hayes, uh, who's the uh, lead vocalist for, uh, righteous vendetta, um, which by the way is a, a really cool band. Um, the uh, Isaiah used to be the drummer for uh, Righteous Vendetta and is now drumming for Love and Death. So uh, it, anyway, it, um, you know, I, I wish that um, in, in a lot of ways, I feel like maybe Love and Death was like they're saying, hey, we, we've got this this uh, corn feel with our guitars. And we're going to try to sound like Righteous Vendetta. And uh, we're, we're going to try to sound uh, a little bit like Breaking Benjamin. And they kind of mashed it together. And this is kind of what they came up with. Uh, and, and and it's not just because those those people are featured or people uh, lead singers from those groups are featured on here. But if you go ahead and listen to both of those other two bands and then you listen to this album, you can get that sense. You get that feeling from it. And uh, I, I wish that they had leaned more toward the Righteous Vendetta side of things than uh, than the Breaking Benjamin side. But, you know, hey, it's it's uh, I'm, I'm not going to buy the whole album. I'm I'm gonna only pick up the last three tracks that I don't have. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Which aren't the last three tracks, but so overall, this album makes me feel like they're leaning more toward getting uh, Jr. the other guitarist to do the vocals, and that's what it felt like. I didn't hear as much Brian on this album vocally, and I I really like Brian's vocals. However, he does not have a mainstream vocal voice. He doesn't have a safe Christian, whatever, you know, type of a voice. Uh, so I feel like they're, they're leaning that way. And unfortunately is with the, the, the vocals of JR, you got to get more toned back in the musical aspect of it because then you have a mismatch of vocals and instrumentation on that album. And so I feel like that's why some of the tracks were more laid back. They're a little more softer so his vocals could come through. And again, the album as a whole is is a great album. I really do like this album. I think the problem is, is I went in with the wrong expectations. And so it, it, it didn't meet my expectations. And that's where I kind of, I guess I failed or I fell short. It was, it was my own personal fault for thinking this was going to be like like the Brian Welsh album, Save Me For Myself. 
and the, the last album. But, but, but you have good reason to believe that it's going to be one way because it's been their current sound. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's not to say that a band can't change the dynamics of, of where they're going and be creative and branch out. Uh, I, and, and, and that's where I think I would have embraced uh, them trying to find a new sound for themselves. But it, again, it, go back and listen to a lot of Breaking Benjamin. And the first half of the album sounds like Breaking Benjamin. Uh, it, 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 it didn't sound w- with that little bit of the love and death twist on it, uh, guitar twist. It, it doesn't sound truly genuine. It, it just sounds very plasticky. I, it, and, and you made the analogy back to like Red's older stuff. It, it you know, except for maybe their debut album. Um, it, it, it got to be the same thing and it all felt soft while still trying to be a, a, a hard rock metal whatever band and then red gave us an album that was worthwhile yeah. Yeah. red's declaration to me blows this album out of the water as a whole now now don't get me wrong there, there's still some really great standout tracks on here but as a whole red's album blows this one away yeah i really um, want to know how much label influence was on this album Cause I feel like, yeah. like there's, there's always that label. Like you got to make, you got to make some of these types of songs in right. order for our labels core audience. And I think yeah. the issue with labels is they look at, this is what's working for these bands. This is what we kind of want you to do. Some of at least somewhat like them. Uh, and I feel like that, that's what happens with, with any, really with any underground that goes mainstreamish even though i wouldn't say you know they're mainstream um but same problem with lecrae like lecrae he made what he wanted to make and then musically he was trying to keep up with what the mainstream sounded like and on a musical way the the trend of the mainstream industry musically not necessarily content wise but and and those are the things that i didn't like i didn't like the the mainstream sound and this album has more of a mainstream sound, so it's still a good album, like I said, several times. But I really wish I didn't feel like the label was pushing them to go a certain way. And um, and so I want, I want Brian back on main vocals for everything. I mean, JR is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's got bad vocals. I prefer the heavier, grungy rough sounding vocals that's what i prefer and that's my preference i don't know what everybody else likes and wants this is solomon's porch podcast these are our thoughts on the album so um so let us know what your thoughts are in the comments did you like it what did you like what didn't you like about it and um and but as far as like playlist songs for me it is uh lamento affliction white flag um slow fire slow fire and let me love you like the first half of the album is one more thing first half of the album i can listen to all my kids in the car and they won't get like creeped out or frustrated or whatnot you know i mean they like some rock but it wouldn't like really like ah. uh the second half of the album you know seven through ten i'd have to listen after i'm coming back from dropping them off at school uh those are the ones i turn up louder so yeah man uh so let us know what y'all think uh love and death i have no idea if y'all gonna see this we love you guys we love your music uh we love what you stand for and i love what brian does uh when he's playing with corn and touring with corn and all that kind of stuff i really admire his heart for the gospel and for ministry and uh this album just wasn't quite heavy enough for the solomon's porch podcast guys so we'll be back with another segment soon stay tuned